Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be jumping back down into the charts for XRP. It's like a roller coaster ride here and uh, we've seen impulsive moves up, impulsive moves down, all invalidated new structures emerging. So guys as I get into this if you find it useful and informative hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord links in the description down below. Fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 it's completely free i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there right with all of that said done and out of the way let's jump on down into this a technical analysis on xrp right we're on the uh, hourly chart we're paired up with usdt and binance is the data source we're going to start things off by just really acknowledging what happened here yesterday basically we were looking for a fourth wave bounce um, instead we actually pushed up higher than the uh you know fifth wave just out of the first wave just here now it is possible that we break down from this area in some kind of diagonal ending pattern um, or some kind of wedge but I think actually there's a different structure emerging here overall okay so uh, we can potentially chalk this up to a few different things um, I've labeled this up as an ABC um, and what we're going to do is we're going to continue this uh, this analysis on this side here right so we see a clear reversal of what's going on and we actually have completed this move okay it's five waves and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what's going on here right so we're going to take this high point um, that happened about one o'clock um, yesterday yeah one o'clock yesterday afternoon uh, we come back down here uh, so our low point then we're going to go ahead and transpose this over to this low point that actually happened at uh five o'clock utc yesterday and we can see that we had a wick that surged up here pushing past the 1.618 and uh, confirming that we have an impulsive structure we then of course have a pull back down from this high down to this low this low basically came in this morning at about 10 o'clock and then we surge on up nicely confirming that move now what i want to do is i just want to jump down into the smaller time frame here you can see that we hit the low before we hit the high um, and as we come back up into here we can now have a look at this right so what we're going to do is we're going to mark this up we've got a clear wave one wave two uh, sorry wave one just at the top here wave two down here wave three comes to that high point wave four comes all the way down here and wave five is a straight line up there like so okay so i'll just move that across a little bit so you can see the wick as well as the uh fifth wave what does this mean what well, means that we are now looking for reversal um, and we can mark this up as a five wave complete so we've got five waves here we'll be looking for three waves to come down and then probably be looking for five waves so what we want to do is we want to see if we get good structure uh, that makes this whole thing impulsive and uh, that'll be something that we discuss later on um, but we should be thinking corrective moves and it could be a really short corrective move so if we come back down into that 15 minute chart you can already see the level of this going already right so we come back down to this low point up to the high move this down uh, there's a possibility of bringing this down to about 72 point, uh, sorry, 75.2. Uh, and I'll just mark that up as a simple ABC here. ABC, uh, like so. Now, I don't think necessarily that we're going to necessarily pull all the way down into that low point uh, based on the hourly stochastic. But there does seem to be some movement to the downside to be had here on the 15, a little bit movement on the 30 minute, but we are completely oversold here on our hourly chart right so if we are to move down um you know it is going to be most probably you know 75 26 and um, however i think uh, we could actually say that we've technically already met the minimum requirements of that move down anyway okay so when we start thinking about what's going on here this could actually already be looking for that next move up uh, based on this hourly chart so do expect some volatility here and um, we are potentially on the cusp of a pretty strong move to the upside but we are going to be constantly aware of what's going on with the larger time frames right we've got a four hourly stochastic that's not overbought but it's heading there uh, we've got got an eight hourly stochastic that uh, has plenty of room to grow when we've still got some growth on this daily chart but not too much before we potentially see some some deeper corrections we are of course talking about a, a move down anyway on the larger scale here so on this daily chart you can of course acknowledge what we've been talking about for a while which essentially is uh, an abc structure um, coming down a little bit here with a bounce then we move up a little bit maybe a bit more then pull back down ultimately what we're really looking for and what we're really tracking and i've spoken about this numerous times already uh, over the last week or so but basically it's this elliott wave triangle just here we're looking to bring ourselves down to around the 50 to 60 cent range uh, to complete that e-wave once you are there 
we are going to be getting a very explosive exit out of this triangular wedge up towards my estimated target of $9.97. Okay, this is just the technical target right now. It could, of course, go higher. It could, of course, go lower. But on a one-to-one -one ratio, what we would expect to find would be approximately $9.97. Okay, that is uh, from my expected uh, E-wave lows, about a 16x, 1,600%. Not the best, not the worst, um, but definitely something that I think many retail investors who are in XRP will be very very relieved to see of course you know depending on what happens with the sec and ripple lawsuit uh, we might see settlement we might see you know ripple win we might see the uh, the sec win right no one really truly knows but i think most likely the most probable outcome is going to be settlement We've pretty much been saying this since December 2020, believe it or not. Um, fantastic opportunities back then. It didn't really make too much sense that the, the SEC were doing this lawsuit. Um, and I do think that we're still going to end up in that settlement. I've been saying it for well over a year now. Um, and I do think that uh, once we actually have confirmation of uh, the lawsuit being concluded, uh, win, lose, draw, settle, doesn't really matter. Uh, one of the things that's going to come out at the end of it is XRP should have clarity. If XRP cannot get clarity at the end of this lawsuit, then... The SEC just simply do not deserve to win because surely um, they only win if it's called a security and that would provide clarity. If they're saying it was a security previously and not a security now, that's also clarity, right? So one way or another, I just see clarity being a part of the, the negotiation talks for settlement. Um, clarity absolutely is what is required. And once, um, you know, retail investors, institutions, whales, etc., actually have an understanding as to what XRP is going to be classified as, uh, pretty much you're free to carry on with life under the, you know, the, the rules of the law, right? You're able to actually ab abide to it, um, which obviously when you don't have clarity, you don't have all these things and you have unfair notice, as I, I like to refer to it as, uh, then essentially what you've uh, really got is, um, you know, a, a world where how are you ever supposed to interact with an asset if you do not have that clarity? So I do think that uh, we're going to likely end up with settlement. The settlement will include clarity. We'll understand that XRP is not a security, but instead it will probably be some kind of exchange token like it is here in the UK. And uh, the, the US will be finally be able to, to list it on the exchanges. And I think the amount of FOMO that XRP will see on the back of, uh, of all of that fantastic stuff is going to be absolutely insane. Now, obviously, there's a lot of retail investors who have already scooped up massive amounts of XRP right prior to, uh, you know, December 2020 when the lawsuit was dropped. Uh, essentially, what we've seen is uh, a huge hodl mentality for years when it comes to XRP. The selling pressure will be quite high, but a lot of these people who have been invested in XRP for such a significant period of time also believe that XRP is going to be going to significantly higher numbers than $9.97. Um, so even when it reaches these levels, there's a possibility that there's going to be still a really strong mentality um, to hodling. And, you know, they'll see maybe $9, $10 come and still hold on and, um, you know, potentially going up to, to thinking it's going to $100 or so. Now, these are, are possible numbers. They absolutely are. Um, but I think you need to really, you know, unleash the full potential of XRP to really see those levels come in that all being said though um i think that uh, you know nine dollars 97 is the most probable outcome by the peak of this bull run and uh, once we complete this e-wave i think that's going to be the last opportunity to pick up xrp at these discounted rates ahead of a bear market guys i'm going to leave that video right there i've spoken about this a dozen times before so do check out my other xrp videos if you're looking for a little bit more on you know what i think is going on longer term but uh, for now that's kind of what i see is going on right now we are in some kind of push upwards before potentially potentially pulling back down in the same way that Bitcoin is. And we should be looking to bring down our daily stochastic RSI along with our weekly stochastic RSI into the low areas for the E-Wave um, so that we can then complete it with a $9.97 potential push up at a later date. Guys, I'm going to leave the video there. If you have found this useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.